In this video, I wanted to discuss Proxmox networking, and specifically that VLAN Aware configuration that you might have already seen and wonder what it is for. VLAN Aware means simply to be able to handle VLAN tags. And in previous videos, we discussed those uh, networking topics like uh, what VLAN is, how it works, what a VLAN tag is, also known as .1Q tag, I mean. And we also discussed what is the difference between access port and trunk port that you can configure on your switch. And these topics are prerequisites for this video. You need to understand those uh, computer network technologies to fully get what we are going to configure in this video about that uh, VLAN Aware Proxmox. But anyways, I hope you are all up to speed then, so let's see what it is all about. If we go to the node, to PVE in my case, to network tab, we can see some entries already. And uh, what are those entries? Well, the first four network devices are my physical interfaces on my mini PC. My mini PC has four Ethernet ports and they are shown as four network devices here. You can see only the first one is active because I only have one cable connected, so only that ENP2S0 is shown as active. And this VMBR0, what this is, it's called Linux Bridge. And it's something like a virtual switch, let's call it. And it's default switch that was created by Proxmox during the installation. When I installed my Proxmox, I gave it address of 192.168.1.201 and that's what it's shown here. And we can also see that port ENP2S0, it belongs to that bridge. So to that uh, virtual switch, let's call it. If I double click on it, we can see the same information. We can see the bridge port ENP2S0. And we can see that VLAN over config, but it's unticked currently. And the other thing, if we go to shell, and if I run command cat etc network interfaces, you basically see exactly the same information. I mean, we couldn't see the loopback interface, it was not included there, but we could see all those four physical interfaces, and here is our bridge. Currently it's configured statically, I gave it this IP address, this gateway, and we can see the only port that belongs to that bridge is ENP2S0. And that's cool. Um, you can easily add more ports to this bridge. You can see space separated list of interfaces. So, so if I wanted to add another interface, let's say ENP3S0, I just type it here, <laughs> click on OK, and now I have another interface that is part of the same virtual switch. And what you can also see is that pending changes below. It says either reboot or apply configuration, because it needs something to activate. What they mean is this button. I will click that apply configuration, I will say yes. Something will run in the background, but basically what it does, it's reconfiguring this file. If we go to shell, if I run the up arrow, at C network interfaces, we can see this port, this new port ENP3 was added to our config. Alright, but that's not what we were talking about today, yes? If I double click on that, I will remove it maybe. Let's go back to what it was at the beginning. I will apply configuration. So we have the default config again. And what if this is not my only network? What if I have maybe 10.20.20.0 and I put it in VLAN 20? And maybe I have another one, 10.30.30.0 and I put that network in VLAN 30. How do I configure my Proxmox to be able to reach all of those networks? One of the solutions would be to create more virtual switches and assign ports. I will show you quickly how it's done. So I will create Linux Bridge. Let's go, it's automatically chosen the name for it. It's fine. That would be 10.20.20, .20, maybe IP, maybe 1, slash 24. And I say create. And I can add another bridge, maybe VMBR2. Whoops, sorry. VMBR1 first, bridge port ENP3S0, yes? Okay, so we have physical interface as well. And now create bridge, another bridge, and I say it's 10.30.30. maybe 7 slash 24. It's a different IP address, but in the network 10.30.30, .30, I say bridge port is ENP4S0, and that's basically it. And if somebody asks, Marek, but why didn't you click that VLAN hour? You said that VLAN 20 is for 10.2020 and VLAN 30 is for 10.3030. Well, in this case, if you created separate bridges, 
you have for specific VLAN, you have also separate cables, which you can connect to the access ports on the switch. Let's say on VLAN 20, but access port and VLAN 30, on, but access port on the switch on the other side. And that VLAN tag will be stripped off automatically because that's access port on that other side. And on the access port, no VLAN tags are allowed. They are stripped off before they are forwarded to Proxmox. That's why it would work. But we can achieve the same using just one cable. If you, for example, have one port only, you can only use one cable anyways. But then we can configure the switch on the other side as a switch port mode trunk, and trunk is a member of all VLANs. That means if the traffic has no VLAN, it will land at the default interface, which in our case is this one. This interface doesn't expect any VLAN tags, but for a traffic with VLAN tag 20 or VLAN tag 30, we have to create interfaces that expect that kind of traffic. So let me show you what I mean. Let me remove this first. Let me remove that. And if I go to VMBR0, I can make it VLAN aware now. I click OK. I will apply configuration. Yes. And if we go back to shell and check the config. And for this portion, nothing changed. But you can see at the end, bridge VLAN aware, yes and bridge VIDs from 2 to 4094. What it means, why 1 isn't it included? VLAN 1 is a default VLAN and it will be still received by this interface, this VMBR0 static interface, because it doesn't expect any VLAN tags. But if I go back to network, I create Linux VLAN this time. There are actually two ways I can create an interface that can receive a traffic with VLAN identifier. And you can see it says, for example, VMBR0.100. Let's see, VMBR0, but I will say .20. What happened here, Proxmox automatically created so-called sub-interface, and that sub-interface belongs to main interface VMBR0, to that switch, to that bridge, I mean, and it automatically expects VLAN tag of 20. And now I can also assign IP address 10.20.20, whatever it was, I don't know, 55, it can be, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's the same network as remaining network that I have configured in VLAN 20 on my switch on the other side. So if I create that now, I have something that can receive the traffic with VLAN tag identifier 20, and I have layer 3 interface, which is 10.20.20.55. And if I create another VLAN, for VLAN 30 this time, I can do again VMBR0.30 if I wanted. That will automatically assign VLAN tag and the interface will belong to VMBR0. But the other way of doing it is I can simply put whatever I want here, maybe Marek 30, let's say, and manually assign row device, which is the bridge, VMBR0, that's the only one we have. And VLAN tag, it doesn't have to match my name at all. It can be 77, yes, or whatever. But I need VLAN tag 30. I have to configure it with VLAN tag 30 because that's what we expect on this VLAN interface. And the last but not least, I want also to have IP address on this interface, 10.30.30 .30 and whatever IP is available, maybe 88 slash 24. And I create that interface. So now if I go to shell, if I check my config, you can't see anything. <laughs> Why? Because I forgot to apply the configuration. So now let's go back to the shell, run that command again, <laughs> and now we can see full config on the Proxmox. This main interface has IP address of that. This is the main interface that will receive the traffic where no VLAN tag is added means it will process the traffic for default VLAN, but we have two more interfaces now. This one is sub-interface, and Proxmox, by just looking at that, will know it will belong to VMBR0, and it will expect ta VLAN tag 20. And this config is a little bit longer, because that's kind of equivalent of interface VLAN. So, well, this one is sub-interface, this is kind of like interface VLAN, if you come from Cisco world, in networking terms. Or at least that's how I see it. We can call this 
interface VLAN whatever we want, we can assign IP address, but VLAN identifier that we expect, we have to specify separately. And we also have to specify which of those virtual switches will process this traffic. And we configured it with VMBR0, which includes this physical interface. So these are two ways of basically doing the same thing. And then if you wonder how to add your virtual machines or containers, Alexi containers, for example, if you want to add them to specific uh, like a sub interface, then you simply create a container and uh, whatever, let's go next. Uh, I've got only one template. I'll go next, 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 next. Network is what I'm interested in. By default, it wants to go to that uh, default VMBR, VMBR0 on the default VLAN, but nothing stops me from changing it to, let's say, VLAN tag 30. And then maybe I want to put it on that network 10.30.30. whatever, maybe 88 on network slash 24. This way, I will attach this Alexi container to this VLAN interface I created on that virtual switch. I know it might be a bit complicated, but uh, watching previous videos where we discussed VLANs, VLAN tags and access ports and trunk ports will help a lot. So if you need, you might have to revisit those. And please remember to visit our Automation Avenue platform where you can learn more about Proxmox, uh, also about computer networking, Linux, Docker, Python programming, AWS cloud, etc. I hope to see you there. And that's all I wanted to say about Proxmox VLANs, so I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.